Okay, so hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about type punning. Uh, this is me. You can find me at various places on the net or in the real world. Um, and yeah, we're going to talk about type punning. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the term, but I'm sure most of you have, have used it in one situation or the other. What it actually means is um, if you're accessing some data through a pointer of an unrelated type. So um, imagine you have an object of type A, and now you have a, a, a pointer of type B star, where B is unrelated to A, and now you simply make that pointer point to the, the object of, uh, of type A. Um, that's it, that, that's type punning. And um, the interesting thing that uh, is important to realize here is that um, the act of making that, that pointer point to the other object does not actually change the uh, contents of that object in memory, like the, the bits of A in memory will still stay untouched. The only thing that you actually change is the type of operation that now gets applied um, to this data if you access it through this new pointer. Um, and I actually have a small example for that. So let's say you have uh, two simple functions. They both do like plus plus on the argument, but in one case the argument is a float and in the other case the argument is an int. And then the code that gets generated for those two, even though the code looks very similar, is actually quite different because in the one case we're doing a floating point addition with the f at instruction, and in the other case we're doing a simple integer addition in the at uh, with the normal at opcode. So you might now ask, yeah, I mean, da, why would I ever want to do an integer addition on a floating point number? That does not make any sense. Um, but actually, sometimes you do want to do it. So, like, for example, one not so well-known fact about floating point numbers is if I have a given floating point number and I now want to get the smallest floating point number that is bigger than the number that I have, then you can actually do that by performing a simple integer increment. Um, and this is actually quite difficult to do otherwise. And if you then take the, the, the difference of those two numbers, that actually gives you exactly the... Uh, the unit of least precision between, uh, between those, those two floats, the, the ULP. Um, so people who need to do this or do need to do other uh, kinds of crazy stuff, um, they usually write code like this. So like in, in C, as you probably know, you can cast any point to any other type if you go through pointers, and C programmers really like to do this. That's why I wrote it here with the C cast. You can do the same thing with the reinterpret cast in C++. Um, but there is a problem, because this is technically not correct. Um, and we will take a quick look at why that is the case. Um, and the problem, the real problem here is that um, not all compilers actually uh, enforce this being wrong. So it's very likely that it will work for you if you write it today, but it might break out of the blue for any reason, for example, after upgrading your compiler. Um, so the reason for this has to do with aliasing. We already heard about aliasing uh, before. So what aliasing is about, um, imagine you have such a function and you have like two pointer arguments. Um, and in uh, both C and C++, um, actually the language is not uh, allowed to assume that those two different pointers point to different things. So um, I can do a call like this legally in C and C++ where they point to the same thing. And as a result, the compiler, when it generates the code for foo, it's not allowed to reorder the writes because that would lead to the wrong outcome in this situation. And other languages, in particular Fortran, is very famous. Uh, they don't have this rule. This would be illegal in Fortran, and that allows some additional optimizations. Um, so what C and C++ do is because this can have a, a, a performance impact in some situation, is that they um, have a, a little bit weaker rule where they say, okay, but if the two pointers actually have different types, then, I mean, it's different types, so they cannot point to the same thing, right? Um, and that is, actually, that is actually illegal now. So now the compiler would be allowed to reorder the writes, but of course if I now do the, the, the trick from before, where I force it to point to the same thing by using a reinterpret cast, so basically doing type punning, um, this is actually undefined behavior. And that is, of course, now a problem, because if I, if I now have a legitimate use case for type punning, I cannot just do the reinterpret cast without running into undefined behavior every other line. Um, 
And it's actually surprisingly difficult to uh, find on the web a solution how to get around this reliably. There's a lot of, of different possibilities, but the only solution that I have found that actually works is this. So I want to do the same thing that I did before, do an integer increment of a floating point number. Um, so of course, I will at some point need an integer which I can increment. Um, and I better make sure that my float fits into this integer. Um, and now what I do is I actually do a mem copy to get the bits from my float uh, from uh, my float into this integer variable. And the important thing is if you want to do this, you really should do it like this, that you have the mem copy enclosing exactly the one operation that you want to perform on the other type, but not more. Okay? So this is the pattern that, that you should use. And now you might say, well, this is pretty crazy. You're doing a mem copy. This is going to be slow as hell. And no, it's not. This is what the compiler generates. It actually understands that what the mem copy does and it can throw it away completely and just apply the operation on, on the raw memory. Um, so this might still, especially if you're coming from a C background, this might still seem uh, unnecessarily complex, but I actually think it's not that bad. And the reason for that goes back to something that, that we heard in actually both keynotes. Like both keynotes actually had a, a slide at one point where they say, don't lie. Um, like I think Sean said, don't lie to your users in your user interface. Uh, and Kate, Kate said, don't lie in your code to your fellow developers. And I want to add to that, don't lie to the compiler. Don't try to smuggle types into functions through pointers that actually have, have the wrong type. Just tell your compiler the truth and it will figure out the right thing to do. Um, if you want to know more, there was also a, call, a talk at CPPCon that goes a lot more into the details of this problem and what you can do about it, so highly recommend it. And I think we have time for one question. Thank you. <laughs>